Hey everyone, welcome back. So I've reviewed a boatload of DAX here on this channel over the last couple of years alone, right? The Core Dave was among my favorites. I think that DAC is close to $14,000, $15,000 now. It came out many, many years ago, but many consider the Core Dave as one of the top tier DACs made today. When I had the Dave here, I loved it for its amazing imaging and detail retrieval. It had what seemed to be at times sounds jetting out from the mix, almost like a special effect. Uh, I had the Weiss DAC 501, which I loved for its studio type of sound, its reel-to-reel -reel tape sound. I absolutely adored that DAC. The Dana Fripps Terminator series have all been wonderful in here. I reviewed the Nagra Classic DAC, which was quite phenomenal as well, uh, uh, a little bit warmer uh, and a little bit more muted than something, say, like the Weiss 501 or the Cord Dave, but it was also a beautiful DAC. Uh, nine, ten months ago when it came out, I purchased a DCS Lena DAC because it had a built-in network streamer. It was an all-in-one piece. I love that DAC so much. The clock came in and I ran the DAC with the DCS clock and some really nice Shunyata uh, Omega clock cables for the past nine, ten months. Now, that DCS stack with those cables come in at a, close to $30,000 for my digital streaming front end. And a few weeks ago, I got an email from Darren over at Jaguar Audio, and he introduced himself and said he watched my reviews and enjoyed them. And he said that my tastes seem to align quite a bit with his. And he said that he thought I should hear this new DAC or newer DAC from T plus A called the DAC 200, and that many people were being blown away by it. So he uh, hooked me up with T plus A. We had a phone conversation and they sent along this DAC 200 for me to check out. Now, I was not in the market for a DAC because I was extremely content with the DCS Lena, with the clock and those Shinyata cables. I had no issues with the sound. Uh, when the T plus A DAC 200 came in, I was so curious. I instantly started comparing it to the DCS Lena. And I don't wanna say that the DAC 200 is better than the Lena, but I don't wanna say that the Lena is better than the DAC 200. They're just a little bit different. The DCS was a little more visceral, a little more energetic, and uh, a little more, uh, a little brighter in the details. The T plus A DAC 200 brought forth tons of details, and in a way, it reminded me a bit of the Core Dave, but without any aggressiveness, without any forward nature, Instead, it was a more organic retrieval of those details. And I was hearing hidden details within tracks that I never noticed before. And I was like, how could I not notice that before? So I went back to the other deck and they were there. I just never noticed them. The sound of the T plus A, it creates a very wide and tall sound stage. I've been able to walk into this sound stage when everything was just set up just right. Um, it's a little bit warm throughout the frequency band from top to bottom, but I don't wanna call it warm because it's not warm or dull. It just takes that edge off. The highs are all there, it's very airy, it's very holographic, it's very uh, human, right? When those vocals come out, it just makes me feel like this is a human sounding DAC. When I go back to the DCS, sounds beautiful as well, but it's a little less human, a little less organic. And if I can be completely honest, which I always like to be, for me, after about three weeks with this T plus A DAC 200, I prefer it to um, the DCS Lena DAC because of that humanity it conveys. It's not all about the electric energy and those details popping out. It's more about bringing you the details, but with, with an energy and an organic nature that's just so beautiful. I can't even put it into words. You see, I'm struggling here. So Darren was absolutely right. Uh, this DAC really blew my mind. Um, I've compared it also against the integrated I have here, the AVIC U150, which is a $20,000 integrated amp, said to have a world-class DAC, and it has a really good DAC inside, a little more plump and juicy compared to the others I've heard, but still that DAC 200 just literally takes it up several notches. And the DAC 200 is not a $20,000, $30,000 DAC. 
course, it's made by T Plus A, who were known for making high-end, high-quality equipment. Uh, this is German-made, uh, German engineering, and uh, you know, I used to love Leica cameras, and it was that German engineering and design that got me. The T Plus A is no different. It's a beautiful little box. It's not too heavy. It's not too large. It's also a preamp. It has uh, out pre-outs to go to an amp. It has an analog in if you want to hook up a turntable, though you do have to have a phono stage with that. It's basically an all-in-one box, even with a headphone amp. It has a ton of filters you can customize. I'm going to show you that in a minute. It has all kinds of inputs and outputs. It's made to a level that's as good as anything I've ever seen. It's made as well as the DCS. Uh, any of the top decks made as well as the Nagra as well, except this comes in at what half the price of the Nagra. Do I like it better than the Nagra Classic? Yes, without question. The T Plus A DAC 200 is a phenomenal DAC. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at it. All right, I am filming this up close. Uh, this flicker is not happening in real life. This is a byproduct of uh, video recording. Um, so this does not flicker in reality, but this is the best I could do. I've tried two cameras, um, but I'm going to show you guys the menu options and how you can customize the DAC 200. So a short press of the menu button brings you to the balance and the upsampling mode. I'm using uh, non-oversampling, means there's no oversampling going on. And to me, this mode sounded the best uh, with the DAC 200. Um, regardless of the source I was using. You can see if I turn this dial, you hear clicks and this goes up. Uh, because I have this as a fixed output to go into my amp, this is now the volume control for the headphone output, which is over here, right? So if you want to use the headphones, you plug that right there, you plug in your headphones and you're good to go. Um, here are your inputs. You have an analog input where you can actually uh, hook up a turntable because you can use this as a preamp, of course. USB input. Uh, then you have the SP, DIF, optical, AES, BNC. This chooses between AES and BNC. Uh, and then you have an HDMI arc option, which is not on this particular unit, but you can add that as an upgrade. If we do a long press of the menu, you see different, uh, 10 different options. So meter mode, uh, this is the VU meters, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, but you can configure them to uh, show you the input level, which is the default, the output level, or the temperature of the unit. And you can tell if it's in uh, optimal uh, operating range in the temperature. So that's pretty cool as well also signal quality. So the VU meters um, can do quite a few things here. I leave it on input level, okay? Input configuration. This is where you can enable or disable the uh, inputs, right? So if you're not using, say, the USB, you can disable it. If you're not using the AES, you can disable it. So that's pretty cool to be able to do. Um, Pre-output, I have it set to line. You can take that to variable. Uh, if you're using this as a preamp, you'll want it set to variable. That way you can control the volume right here or with the included remote. I keep it at line because uh, I want it to go straight into the amp and control volume with the amp. Um, so there's that. Display brightness. You can change the display of the brightness, uh, the brightness of the display. I have it on six. You can change the display to where it's always on or turns off after a set amount of time. I just leave it on. Color profile. Now you could open this up and go to change the colors of the VU meters. Let's take a look at that again. So if I want to take out all of the green from the VU colors, it'll then turn them a purple, right? So you can do this and configure these colors however you like. Um, at the end of the day, I've tried them in pink, red, purple, blue, orange, uh, and I just prefer the default white light color for me. That's uh, the cleanest uh, and easiest to read option. Energy saver, there's two choices. There's comfort and there's econo or eco. Uh, so eco turns off 
the DAC uh, after a few minutes of it not receiving a signal. Comfort, it just always stays on. I've been leaving this on uh, ever since it came in. You could change the language, the remote control, you can enable or disable, uh, and uh, you can show the device info. It shows you the firmware version and all of that good stuff. So there you go. You can also change the filters with this OVS button right here. And it changes it. You'll see it in here. Have your uh, coax inputs here. There's two of them. You have two optical inputs here. You have an AES input here and a BNC input here. You have a USB input over here. So you, all of your digital inputs are absolutely covered. None are missing. Uh, you have an analog out via XLR here. You have an analog out here via RCA and an analog in right here via RCA. Um, the HDMI card, I don't have that installed on this one. But if you need HDMI ARC, for example, you could get that as an option. And you can see everything is laid out in a nice fashion. T plus A does a really good job on building um, the DAC 200s. So as you can see, the DAC 200 is full of features. Uh, you have those uh, filters. You can customize the lights of the VU meters. Um, you can hook up your turntable, you can go to an amp, or you can just use it as a DAC. Now, if I have one thing that I could nitpick on the DAC 200, and it's not even legitimate for this kind of money for what you're getting out of it, is it would have been nice if it had a built-in network streamer, right? And have an ethernet input and away you go. You don't have to add a streamer. Now I tested the DAC 200 with a Blue Sound Note Gen 3, the latest. I tried it with the USB out. I've also tried it with a coax to BNC. I have an adapter. And the BNC input of the DAC 200 sounded a little bit better than the USB. I also tried it with a Lumen U1 Mini and it didn't sound too much different from the Note. A little bit more brighter up top, a little more extended in the top, but it's very minor. The, the new Node is really, works really, really well as a streamer going into a DAC. It's a, it's a wonderful piece of equipment, 599 bucks. You can't beat it. If you don't have a streamer yet and you're looking to try it out, the Blue Sound Node, the latest gen, is what I would recommend without hesitation. I'll put a link in the description below. But the DAC 200 is just a phenomenal DAC in every way. The build quality is as good as it gets in high-end audio without the flash and bling that some companies put on to make you feel like it's extra, right? It uh, is simple to use, easy to navigate, comes with a quality remote control. You can flip filters from your seat or whatever you'd like to do. Um, it has all kinds of inputs and outputs. This is a wonderful, wonderful digital to analog converter. And these DACs do make a big difference within a system. I believe the T plus A DAC 200 is a phenomenal product made by an amazing high-end hi-fi company. And this is a DAC that some companies would probably charge double the money for. So at around seven grand, 7,200, this DAC is, is unreal for a high-end system. Now, I wouldn't say it would compare against the 30,000, the 40,000 DACs and up, but if you're comparing it head-to-head -head against DACs in the similar price range, up to 15,000 say, the DAC 200 can hold its own with ease, and there's really nothing negative to say about it. Uh, everything I've said here are my true feelings about the DAC. I didn't get paid to review it. I don't get to keep the DAC. As a matter of fact, I wish I could keep it. If I were in the market for a DAC today, without hesitation, it would be the T plus A DAC 200. Um, for me, I like it better than anything I've heard in here uh, before uh, because of the reasons I stated. I don't review everything that comes in. A lot of people say, well, everything you review is the best. Well, if, if I'm reviewing something that doesn't meet my standards for what it costs, I send it back and I decline the review. If something comes in that wows me and bests what I've had before 
for less money, I'm going to tell you about it. And that's one of these cases right here. Uh, Jaguar Audio was great to work with. Darren's a great guy. Um, so be sure to check them out. I want to thank them for sending this to me for review. Uh, and it's a DAC I can highly recommend if you want a high-end sound and you want all those features I told you about in this video. Highly recommend T plus A DAC 200. I hope to hear more of their products soon. I'd love to hear their integrated amp. That thing I've been eyeballing for a couple of years. It's just well out of my price range, so I haven't had a chance to hear one, uh, but maybe T plus A can send me one to check out. That would be awesome. So. I'll see you guys next time. I have that giveaway of the Pure Fidelity Stratos cartridge coming soon, the review of that cartridge, and the review of the Harmony turntable. I also have other things on the way being shipped to me now for review. Lots of stuff coming up. Subscribe, thumbs up, hit those notifications. I'll see you next time.